Welcome to the No Name Brand Podcast. My name is Sashka Hanarapal, actress, singer, dancer, turned brand marketing sales and advertising strategist who brands your soul. And each week I bring you an inspiring person or message to help you discover your under God, turn up your leadership notches, challenge the status quo, because you're fast and furious with a powerful message to share with the world. Thank you for taking time out with me today. And without further ado, let's get our creative and wisdom juices below wall. Yabba dabba do, and welcome back to this week's No Name Brand Podcast with moi, your host, Seshka, where I invite inspiring and visionary guests from around the world to share the thought leadership on entrepreneurship their world and business philosophy, and at the same time, because I'm all about putting knowledge into action, learning something new that you can implement today to be the change that you want to see and be in the world. Now, today's guest, I thought it'd be a cool idea to become, well, he thought it'd be a cool idea to become an astronaut when he was a kid, and that he did. Only he found a bigger comet, planet Earth. We're really cool people where he wants to make a bigger dent in the world, helping cool people build better businesses and better lives. Our next guest cannot stand bullshit and fluff, and his sense of humor is wicked, my kind of person. Knowing this about himself has been one of his strengths in moving forward in his own business and life, especially when it comes to lead generation. And we'll go a little bit into that if you don't know what that is. Because who likes to connect with? beat around the bush businesses who never get to the freaking point and are so serious you could shut off any sense and sensibility. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, no one. Our next guest developed, created and wrote a best-selling book about his own methodology called Leadsology. 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 A 10-part model that reveals each step on the path to generating a steady stream of high-quality, inbound, new client inquiries flowing, baby, into your business virtually every week of the year. Who wants some of that? Sounds almost magical, right? Well, magic doesn't come on its own. Oh, what? It does come with putting in the hard work, which trainers, consultants, and other advisors know needs to be done in order to create a reliable flow of high-quality leads. In other words, the magic that we seek. You can manifest and affirmate and who knows what as much as you like. If you don't put in that work, nada's going to happen, baby. Our next guest's whole career has been centered on marketing. He's built and sold four companies managed annual revenue of 20 million and is a multiple best-selling author of the book Leadsology series and has over 37 years experience successfully driving customers to businesses. Now that's my kind of person. We want to know more, don't we? And he's here with us today to delve into the world of entrepreneurship, education, and philosophy around his experience and methodology. So, let's give him a warm welcome. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, Tom Poland. Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm blown away with my own introduction. <laughs> You're That's, pretty awesome, that, huh? That was pretty freaking phenomenal. Oh, cheers. No, pressure, no pressure, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you live up to expectations, so that's good. <laughs> Actually, there aren't any expectations. I know that you're good. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to dive into the first section, which is all about entrepreneurship. Now, everybody wants more business, more sales, more inquiries, more real leads. However, the market does tend to have a little more of convert pictures, skewed messages, and too much tease and tinsel. Not enough proven and practical. Is this why you created your marketing system and why does it work? Yeah, two great questions. Uh, yes, and uh, the other answer is a bit longer. The Leadsology journey started almost 40 years ago when I, I started one of my previous businesses and I understood pretty quickly that I was waking up every Monday morning unemployed uh, and that it didn't matter what I was doing, I'd better get very good at marketing. So I 
invested a lot of money and did a lot of courses and a lot of programs and so on. And at those days, we didn't have this little thing we called the internet. <laughs> so it meant a lot of traveling and you know, workbooks and so on. Anywho, so for several years, I would do this religiously you know, several times a year and come back and implement everything and found out that absolutely nothing changed. <laughs> So here I was, damn, all right. I was, get, I was getting quite, quite frustrating. And so eventually I just sat down and thought, I've got to figure this out myself. And I'm not saying I didn't learn anything. It's just that I didn't have a system that was complete that would bring in a regular flow of leads quite predictably. So that was the start of the Leadsology journey, a journey which took, well, decades. And I can only really say I perfected it in the last 11 years. So quite a long time. I'm not a fast learner. In fact, one of my colleagues said, oh, what you've done is absolute genius. And I said, you take that back. It took me 30-something years of slow, plotting, stupid mistakes to figure this out. So I will not have you compromise my sense of stupidity by calling me a genius. A genius would have worked it out in 11 weeks, I suspect. So that's the short answer to the first part of the question was, Leadsology was born out of a frustration, which, which I've since discovered a lot of people share. Mm. It's a very common experience for people to hear someone say, trust me, give me your money and I'll show you how to get clients. Mm. I'll show you how to set up Facebook ads or I'll show you how to set up a LinkedIn group or I'll show you how to write articles or I'll show you how to pay me your money, do my course, do my program, do my coaching and we'll get some more clients. And then all the people generally have left for that two months later is an empty bank account balance. There's no new clients to show. But so, so my experience all those decades ago is still being mirrored by, by all my, almost all my new clients. Mm. So that's the genesis of Leadsology. That's the origins of it. It was the quest to discover how I could predictably bring in new client inquiries in being the operative word there. I didn't want it to chase people virtually every week of the year. That to me was the Holy grail and I'm pleased to say I've cracked it. Yes. There's, there's three parts to how we cracked it. One is, if you think of marketing, there's three parts to marketing. So the first thing is you need an audience, right? So you need someone that's going to be interested in buying something. And that's what I call the audience. It could be literally an audience of people hearing you speak, or it could be drivers on a freeway looking at a billboard. That's an audience. So radio listeners are audiences. Readers of books are audiences. There are audiences everywhere. I and mean, you can buy lists of audiences. It's not hard to find audiences. But finding a high quality audience that doesn't cost you any money and that's inexhaustible. Those three characteristics, by the way, are very carefully chosen, high quality, free, inexhaustible. That would be quite cool, right? <laughs> Damn, yes. Yeah, dang yes. And then if you think about, well, that's the audience, the second part of the, every single marketing model is there's got to be an asset through which you get the message about your magic out to that audience. Mm. And in terms of assets, well, you could write a book, you could do a blog post, you could do articles, you could do video series, free trials, five-day challenges. There's all sorts of assets, no shorts of assets. You can run no. public speaking events, you can go on radio shows, you can go on people's podcasts, etc. But which one is the best one? Mm. To, first of all, attract the right person. Secondly, to educate them quickly about what you do and how you do and the benefits of it. Thirdly, to eliminate competitors that should be eliminated, quite rightly, rationally, ethically, et cetera. And fourthly, to motivate them to want to know more, to buy or to book a consult. So what's the best audience? What's the best asset to do all those things I've just mentioned? And finally, what's the best call to action? So there you go. You've got the audience, the asset, and the action. That's a very simple marketing model that apply to absolutely every single type of marketing that you can think of, whether it's inbound, outbound, online, offline, standing on your head. Whatever, whatever it is. So what I've figured out over the years is on these days, you think about audiences, you and I and all of our clients and prospects are marketing to an audience that other people are marketing to. Mm. We're not the first one trying to target our ideal clients. Yeah. And a bunch of those other people that are targeting the same ideal client are targeting them with a different product or service, at least a different twist. And they've got, they're on email subscriber lists. So the very best audience is other people's email subscriber lists because, and a little tip here, a strategic clue, people say, well, Tom, you're doing lead gen. So obviously someone else doing lead gen wouldn't want to expose your stuff to their audience because that's kind of what they do, right? Yeah. Competitor! Wrong. No! Wrong. <laughs> because, because the very best people that I work with, that we, we do JVs with, joint ventures with, 
who have these big email lists and have a great following because they've done a terrific job of nurturing, haven't just tried to flog them a new product every other day of the week. Those people are mature enough to understand that there are people on their email list that will never buy from them. And I understand there are people on my email list that will never buy from me. Mm. But they'll buy from the other one. Boom! Blow your mind. Did everyone hear that? Say that again. Say that again about the list. I don't think they heard that. Let's say Susie Smith is a marketer in New, New, New York and she does lead gen through webinars, which is kind of similar to what I do. A lot of people think, well, if you approach Susie Smith to do a joint venture, which I would be in this instance, I would do a webinar for her email list and she would do one for mine, would do a cross marketing exercise. Most people would think that Susie Smith is someone that would not say yes to that value proposition. Mm-hmm. But as a mature marketer with 30, 40, 50, 60,000 email subscribers, she understands that she needs to grow her email list and uh, she's also not going to feel threatened by me because she's pretty secure about what she does. But she does understand that there are people on her list that will not buy from her, that will click with me, and I understand vice versa. Mm. The first thing about the audience is you want to target people. Why they'll say yes, I'll come to it in a moment. <laughs> but you want to target people who are as close as possible to your service, to what you're doing. Mm. Well, think about this. If someone, let's, let's compare the difference. If someone's on Facebook, clearing messages, catching up with family and the friends and the daughter that never actually freaking will calls me, but I want to see what she's up to, you know, <laughs> guilty. <laughs> Intent. Um, yeah, and they see a little ad on the corner of their eye about lead gen and they click on the ad and they go through my funnel, etc. That is not someone who is shopping with intent. Mm. That is someone who is wandering around and saw something out of the corner of their eye. That is an extremely low quality in terms of their likelihood to buy prospect. They're not even a prospect. They're a suspect. They're not even what I call a lead. They've opted into something that's completely free. They've gone click, 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 boom, they're on my list. Now, I've done a lot of Facebook advertising and funnels and flip testing and segmenting and tripwise and auto responders and all the rest of it. So it's not like I haven't done it. I did it for years and years and made a lot of money out of it, but not these days because it's got too expensive. But even back then, when we could make a buck out of it, that opt-in email subscriber that came from a Facebook ad is literally 5% of the value of an email subscriber. There is literally, they have a one in 20 chance of buying relative to the email subscriber. Hmm. Very, very low quality. And it's costing me a lot of money to get them opted in. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, but compare that to Susan Smith's email subscriber, who's opted into her email list because this person has opted in. The subscriber has an interest in lead gen. Hmm. And then they've registered for my webinar because they have an interest in lead gen. Hmm. So we've effectively got someone who's opted in twice expressing a, an interest in the same subject and have declared that they are prepared to spend one hour of their life to learn about what I've got to offer and from my list to what Susie's got to offer. So the quality of the lead that comes through from someone else's email list, that's the audience, I call it OP and other people's networks. No commission paid, by the way. We don't do a affiliate commission. We just do a swap. Yeah. They come along to my webinar and I've chose the webinar as the member of the audience asset action, mm-hmm. audience from other people's networks, asset the webinar. Why? Because, well, it's the just simply hands down the best way to, to educate people, to motivate people, <laughs> I mean, you think about this, you know, the oldest, most successful marketing method in the world, the oldest, most successful marketing asset in the world is speaking to groups of people. Yeah. If you have any doubt about that, just ask you how many clients Buddha, Muhammad and Jesus Christ have. (laughs) Billions. And all those three dudes did was speak to groups of people and small ones at that. So we know that works pretty well, right? (laughs) And you, you take that oldest, most proven successful marketing method in the world and combine it with the newest marketing medium in the world which is the internet and what you get is webinars and i can i run webinars here every month our house sits on the sand at little castaways beach next to the waves beautiful spot never travel anywhere past the local cafe because i'm an introvert i love that i have clients in 27 cities around the world and they've all come through webinars wow. from other people's email lists so audience other people's email lists asset a webinar where you take people through and Demonstrate your capability, eliminate competitors rationally, ethically, logically, uh, educate the attendees to how you work with your clients and give them an offer for a consult, which is the action. It's a call to action is if you want this in your own business, please book a time here. Now, there's some tricks to this as well because every business coach and every you know, marketer on the website has you know, a free strategy consult, right? Click here, book your, woo, hoo, hoo. Uh, we'll brainstorm with you. And we all know it's a freaking sales ambush, right? 
Not always, but most of the time. No, that's, that's true. Not always. Yeah. And thank you for picking me up on that. Almost always, it's the intent is to sell you something. Yeah. But it's dressed well, up as something. Business. That, that's business. Well, it is business. We all know it is. And it's probably a reasonable assumption. And, and, but, but why not just call it what the freaking will is? Exactly. Layman terms. Yeah. If, if you want to talk about becoming a client, click here. Mm. That's fair enough. Well, the way we do it, though, is we're not quite as crass as that. By the end of the webinar, people know the model that I've just described to you, the audience, the asset, and the action. That's how we generate leads, and that's how my clients generate leads, and that's what we show them how to do. If you think it might be relevant to your business, let's have a chat about it. But we tell them what the price of working with us is. We tell them how long the engagement's for. We tell them how it all works. We have an online program. We support that by five implementations, support group meetings every week online with Zoom. We support it with 24-7 messaging to help you with the questions in between the meetings. I give everyone my personal phone number because you're never going to need it because the support we give is just insanely adequate. But I'm happy to give it to you because then you know that I back myself to give you the support you need. Anyway, uh, and we also say, you know, don't pay us any money for God's sake, okay? Because all those other marketers are saying, give me your money, I'll show you how to get some more clients. And you got disappointed. Remember how many times you did that again? Oh, yeah, seven times you've done that. So let's stop doing that. So don't trust me. Don't give me your money. Just work with me for a month and you decide if that's a good idea. So that's part of the offer. But if at the end of the month, and I've met with you once, twice, three times a week, as many times as you like, really, and we're implementing, and you're thinking, wow, this is really good. Yes, I would like to be paid, please. But you can do that at the end of the month. And if during the 30 days, no conditions whatsoever, no conditions whatsoever, we give you full complete access to all the IP. You don't have to give us a reason for canceling. Just send me an email, say cancel. We'll cancel your subscription immediately. Your car's not charged at all. We just say thanks for giving it a go. So that's part of the offer. And when they go to the consult booking page, they have to check the boxes to understand that the conversation we're going to have is about whether it's a good idea for them to become a client of mine. Mm. And they have to check a box to say, I can afford the monthly fees, albeit there's nothing to pay in the first month. And they have to check a box to say, if we agree it's a good idea to work together, I'm ready to start. Mm. And once they've, remember, they've come from someone else's email list, registered for my webinar, attended the webinar, stayed to the end, which, you know, only 90% of the people do, booked a consult, agreed to all those terms and conditions for the consult, turned up to the consult, and now we're having a conversation with them. Mm. This is an extremely highly qualified prospect. Yeah, yeah. They're motivated, educated, and they don't go away and explore other options because we've already blown those other options out of the water in the main. Again, ethically, logically, radically. They understand they won't be able to do this adequate uh, completely on their own, not unless they want to take 11 years to do it like I did. Yeah. So, so of course, our conversion rates in those consults are very high. So one of the things I sent it to my email list, I think maybe about three weeks ago, I can't remember now, is how you buy is how you sell. So the way you've explained everything at the moment is very, although the personality or the tonality or whatever is introvert, you're very systematized, you're very logical in the process, and you want to take someone through a journey. Whereas yes. most people are taught, I don't want to say wrongly, but it's just through their limited experience, is that wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Just come in, let's do this. Right. There's no personality, no tonality. There's no customer journey. There's no thought behind it. And it kind of makes yeah. you think, well, is that how they buy? Because how you buy is how you sell. And how you buy Quite how you sell is also leading to that high quality or highly qualified client coming in because you've put all that effort in into mm. helping someone to really think about something. So there's no cognitive dissonance by the time they come in. So there's really I don't know what that is, but I'm sure there's none of it. <laughs> There's no, there's no afterthought about coming in because you've, you've answered all okay. the questions. There's no like, you yeah, know, when you yeah, buy a jump, yeah. you buy a jump or a pair of shoes and you go, oh, I don't know if I should have bought that. I don't know if that was a good idea. That's cognitive dissonance. That's like, oh, right. I didn't um, really validate my reason buyer's for buying. remorse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like the bag of dog food that was organic that I took it to the counter. It's like this little bag of, like this little bag of dog food, right? And I got to the counter of this organic store and she said, $67, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I, like I froze like a deer in the headlights. I just handed my card over. I was like, you know, stunned fish out of water. And I just remember walking out to my car going, holy crap. 
I mean, my dog costs less than this. I didn't want to buy another dog. I just wanted to feed it for a couple of meals, you know. Oh my god. That's me because I get to the counter. I can't. I don't. I can't say I'm sorry. I'm putting this back. This is too much. So maybe we buy like we sell. I don't know. Think about the human experience mm. and what is it that's going on in people's minds that stop them from moving forward with your offer? Mm. And it's very often a lot of past experience that they've had where they've got frustrated or disappointed and they're now experiencing unconsciously the potential fear of those things happening again. And not just financial risk, but emotional risk. If this is finally the answer, if I invest in Tom's program and it really is the real deal and it doesn't work, I don't want to experience that disappointment again. Mm. And the unconscious will do extraordinary, go to extraordinary lengths to help us avoid disappointment. Yeah. You know, we see it all the time with parents rescuing kids. You know, they lose the, the pocket money they've saved up for and we just replace it immediately because we can't stand their disappointment and their tears. Mm. So we've got this wired into us to avoid you know, in broad terms, Freud would call it pain. But if we segment that down, it could be, you know, avoid financial loss, avoid disappointment, avoid frustration and so on. So we've got to take all of those out of their unconscious mind. The way I explain it is that during your marketing, it's like you imagine a prospect at the start of a 100 meter track on, you know, at the start line and we put a goal to the finish line. And it's like we're watching them look at the pot of gold and we can see, yeah, they like that. Right. Yeah. That's what you want, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but what we don't see, you know, we're looking at like flight on perspective, but they're looking down the, the hundred meter track and they see all these hurdles between them and the pot of gold. Mm. And they're not going to move until we take the hurdles away. And those hurdles of, you know, can I trust Tom? Is he going to be like the others where I handed money over and I didn't have anything to show for it? How do I know I'm going to implement? I mean, am I going to get enough support? They're all hurdles. And if they're not consciously asking the questions, they're going on unconsciously. And a lot of people, if you don't, even if they don't ask the question, if you don't answer it, yeah. they won't buy. Exactly. You've got to ask the questions they're not answering. Yeah. You've got to be that yeah. one step ahead. Yeah. We want people to believe us. For God's sake, let's be authentic. Let's be genuine. Let's not treat them as idiots. We don't call it a training webinar if it's not. Yeah. If it's, I mean, we call ours a demonstration. If you want to see how our clients, 27 countries, are generating an inbound flow of weeds, uh, leads, weeds. <laughs> Leads, definitely not weeds. Uh, uh, Freud, where are you? You know, virtually every week of the year, then come along, we'll show you how our clients are doing that. So if we can be creative enough, we can combine creativity with honesty, we can come up with a value proposition for people to attend a webinar or whatever. Mm. That's very appealing. That's also very genuine. Yeah. Leading into that, it's got a lot to do with no like trust. And where do you feel no, like trust is moving towards generally. Are we selling more or are we seeing that empathy is more needed? Like less Wolf of Wall Street and more Aaron Brockovich type of thing or something? Or It depends on the segment you're in. I mean, if you're in automotive, it's very different to say business coaching. I mean, Seth Godin famously wrote that book, All Marketers Are Liars. <laughs> we could probably say virtually all marketers are liars, but what's happening in my space and in the business coaching space and the consulting space, it's ubiquitous. Because marketers generally fall into two broad categories, not all of them, but most of them. Mm -hmm. One are the bullshit artists that know the peddling stuff that's not going to work and they peddle anyway. And their marketing is like 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. The brilliant marketers, but the product they're selling is like one out of 10 at best. So people get burnt. That's one broad category of marketer. Another broad category are the ones that hope it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. They are more honest, but they need the money in, so they're going to market stuff and they'll, they'll go all out to try and help you. But unfortunately, a lot of the methods, despite their best efforts, their best intentions, are not going to give you a great return on investment. Mm. If you've got thousands of these people out there, either deliberately rip, ripping people off or trying but not quite delivering the value, that means when I do my marketing, there are literally millions of people that had an experience of one or two of those broad categories of marketers. Mm. So I think to answer your question, as people, are, as people get older, they're exposed to more of that, they've lost more money, they are trusting less. Yeah, yeah. And if you come out with a fresh, authentic, direct value proposition, they'll recognize that pretty quickly and go, ah, 
different to the others I've had, which dressed it up with hype. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't post photos of myself sunbaking on the deck of my luxury yacht across the Adriatic outside of Dubrovnik. <laughs> and I don't hire a penthouse suite and have photos of myself taken as if I owned the freaking thing. And I don't go to a Mercedes Benz dealer and lean on the car and point it and go, it's mine, you know, the dangling the keys. <laughs> Yeah. No, we don't do that. <laughs> no. Well, how you buy is how you sell and how you trust and how you like and how you know, how you build your knowledge is also how you sell. I'm exactly the same. It's very rare that I'll post anything about my family. Every now and again, when I have an epiphany, I'll be like, I had an epiphany, but this will benefit someone else that I know is maybe in the same situation, mm. but it's not necessarily something that I'm marketing. It's just really genuine. I had an epiphany. It's- yeah, it's not, it's, not this epiphany? it's not the look at me, how cool am I? And, you know, if you pay me enough money, you can be cool like me too. It's not that. <laughs> shit. We should do a song about that. We should do a video. We should do a it's, video. I mean, I know, I know celebrity endorsements work and I know, I know that stuff works, but it's bullshit. You know, it's, it's fake. It's hollow. It's plastic. You know, I'm not going to do that any more than I'm going to get a freaking penis enlargement. <laughs> I don't know if endorsements work anymore. Well, really, like it used oh. to, like in the 80s, I, I was in London last week or somewhere like, and going through the airport and there was a huge post. I mean, there's so much advertising of Heidi Klum, advertising something with nails and right. hair or something. And I was like, who does that? Is this her product? <laughs> like who? I would never in my life buy that product because we socially and knowledgeably more informed about products. I mean, not everybody wants to. Well, that, that's that, that's a- there's no doubt that that's a growing segment, but yeah. you know, there's six point something billion people out there. So there's a bucket load that'll go, Oh man, if I bought that perfume, I could be like Heidi, you know, <laughs> it's an unconscious association. And when you put that under the rational conscious examination, it doesn't stand out, but there's a lot, they'll sell a bucket load of stuff for that. It's just, it's just not something I want to do. And it's also not something that my target market are going to respond to particularly right. well. They're looking for something more practical, more pragmatic, more implementable, more provable. Um, most of all, I do believe that a bunch of my clients have been burnt three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times from people who said, trust me, give me your money and I'll show you how to get some clients. Yeah. Um, so when I come along and say, if, if you want to work with me, for God's sake, don't trust me. <laughs> and then they go, well, hang on, if we're going to work together, I don't have to trust you. I said, well, it hasn't been working well for you, has it? You know, <laughs> you've done that a lot of times and you just burnt money. So this time, why don't I just trust you to pay? Yeah. Dive in, have a look. So not so much about me now, but if a listener is, is, you know, what I encourage them to do is just sit down and think what would stop most people from buying from you? Mm. Cause we focus on the features, which is great. You know, our, our whoop do things and we give this and we do that and we give a bonus. That's fine. That's terrific. It's important. But what are the unconscious barriers that's going to stop people moving forward? What do they have to hear or read in order for you to stand out, as Coco Chanel said it so well, in order to be indispensable, one must be different. Mm-hmm. Um, if the whole, we, the 30 day thing, which is a trial, we give them complete access to every single 27 modules in our whole system. They could rip us off if they wanted to. We meet with them every single week to help them implement. Oh man, I sweat buckets of blood on that one. Thinking, do, am I going to do this? Am I going to get ripped off? Can I trust people? People will just rip me off. Surely, won't they rip me off? No, they don't. Funny thing. Um, they don't. And there's a reason for that, but I was quietly surprised and delighted at how the majority of people will pay reliably if they said that they would pay. Mm. And the vast majority, a bigger percentage, are trustworthy, yeah. meaning there is a gap there where some people are trustworthy but just can't pay, mm. run out of money, whatever. Yeah. Um, and by but, the time but they the vast can- majority, I mean like 95% plus of people will actually honor their payments if they possibly can. Well, by the honor time them. they got to that, you know, that 30 days, they've already, they've gone through so much already to commit to where they are at that moment. I think that's a very astute observation. And if you go back even further than that, they've opted into someone else's email list. They've opted into my webinar. They've attended the webinar. They've stayed to the end. They booked the consult, ticking all the, all the goons, turned up the consult, started the program. Yeah. They want this to work. Yeah, exactly. They actually want to start paying me the money. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the point where they go, yes, this is the real deal. This is really helping. Yeah. So it's not like I'm having to try and convince them to stay. No. If, if the product or the service that we're delivering stacks up, 
mm. and people have bought what they believe they bought, they weren't hoodwinked, um, they'll want to pay you. So have a think about creating an offer where people don't pay any money up front. Yeah. Speaking about that, I want to go into the next part. So we want to apply before we come to the end. Yeah. I want to apply sure. what we're busy talking about right now. Uh, real okay. practical advice to get marketing machine working. So I have a few things here that we can maybe work on. So first option is to reveal your internationally lauded formula for creating a marketing message that gets cut through and motivates an ideal client to act. The second right. thing is covering critical differences between marketing a service as opposed to a physical product and why mm. traditional marketing should be avoided at all costs. And what other practical tip can you give our listeners today to implement today to get a tangible result for their lead generation? Okay. So we're starting with the marketing message. Yeah. Right. So what's a marketing message? People might know it as a USP, unique sales proposition, elevator pitch. You know, that thing you, when people says, what do you do when you're in an elevator? You've got to tell them before it gets to the next floor. A very short uh, dinner party question was, what do you do for a living? And so the idea behind, I just call it a marketing message and it doesn't really matter what label we stick on it, but it's the thing that you're going to repeat ad infinitum. You're going to sprinkle it around the internet in your community like confetti at a wedding. And if you do it right, it'll get cut through. I'll explain what that is in a moment. And it'll motivate people to want to know more. Mm. Whatever form that wanting to know more is, whether it's subscribe to your email list, register for a webinar, book a consult, whatever that wanting to know more, what form that is, they will want to know more. They'll be motivated. So in order to do that, we have to have three things in the marketing message. First of all, it's got to be benefit rich. Mm. It is not a description of what we do for a living. It doesn't mention that I have a program. Yeah. or that I'm a business coach or, you know, I've got bright lights or that I want to sell. It's nothing to do with the product or the service. It's the benefit of what they're going to enjoy once they've engaged with your product or service. So that's the first thing. It's got to be benefit rich. I'll give an example in a moment before and after. Secondly, it's got to contain something that is different. Mm. If it's not different to what they've heard before, they will not notice it. Your marketing message will be camouflaged amongst a pile of other marketing messages they get bombarded with every single day. Mm. It's like having a thousand books on a bookshelf and yours is in the middle there and you're hoping someone's going to buy it and they don't. They buy all the books around it and you ask them, why didn't you buy my book? And I said, I'm sorry, but all the covers look the same. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't notice your book. It didn't stand out. They, like, they literally, the covers are all the same, but you said, but, but the content was fantastic. so much better than the other books. Sorry, but the covers are the same. Yeah. So the, it's got to be differentiated and it's got to contain specifics. Mm. Specifics like a magic elixir of marketing, they increase believability and desirability. Mm. If you say to me, what do you do for a living? I say, well, I, I do marketing. Oh, you're on. Okay. You say, what do you do for a living? I said, well, I can show you how to generate one new high fee paying client every week of the year, virtually every week of the year. Oh, I'm interested. Yeah. Why, what, what made the difference between this broad general message which I, I do marketing which describes the service by the way not the benefit the second one was benefit rich and it contained specifics and it was different to what other people are saying which is you know perhaps grow your business or get more clients or whatever else I'll give another example max was um, a software developer i have a lot of software clients the software is a wonderful thing to market because there's no no shortage of supply you know you sell one unit or a million units the same deal also for the supplier Anyhow, so Max had point of sale software that he was marketing to quick service restaurants. We would know them as McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, et cetera, fast food joints, but they call them QSRs in the, in the trade because it's a bit more <laughs> bloody da. So I said, well, you know, what's on your, let's have a look at what's your website, what's your business card. If you're in front of an ideal client, a uh, prospective client, and they said, what do you do? What do you say? He said, well, we, you know, we have point of sale software, we have QSRs. Eyes glaze over. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, let's work on that, right? <laughs> because no McDonald's franchise restaurant owners wants another piece of software. Yeah. They're up to their ears in software. Yeah. But they do want more sales. And even so, in that respect as well, sorry, Tom, is also then, you know, you ahead. might you you might be underselling with whatever service that you're saying that what you do, but sometimes you also get very creative that you overwhelm people with fancy right. words where they're like, huh? <laughs> yeah. The only, the only time you want someone thinking about your marketing message is when you ask them to think about it. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, Other than that, it should be like a hot knife through butter. Yeah. So with Max, the guy who's Mark, you know, doing point of sale software for, for fast food outlets, what we came up with is increase your profits and sales by 25% within 90 days. Guaranteed. Note, no mention of software. It could have been signage, sales training, customer service, different car parks, packaging, bundles. Could have been any number of things. And the ideal client of Max didn't care what it was so long as it gave them the benefit, which was an increase in sales. Now, specifics in there, right? If you look at that, it's benefit rich, increased sales by 20, specifics 25% within 90 days. Very different to what any other software developer was saying. They're all focused on their software and how the features and installation, training, and everything else. Um, they don't give a rats about that. They want the sales <laughs> increase. Ding, 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 and they yeah. Might. So that's that's what we switched. And so we've made it benefit rich. We put specifics in there and differentiated. That marketing message got cut through and it motivated people to want to know more. I love that. And the difference between a service and a product, physical product that you're marketing, was that included in the message? No. The difference is that when you have a service, advice, etc. It's more like you're proposing marriage than it is selling a washing machine. <laughs> and true story, I asked my wife if Hugh Jackman knocked at the front door and he proposed to you, what would you do? You know, Hugh Jackman's, he can sing, he can dance, he's got a body Adonis will die for, he's got hair, which is a big plus over me. <laughs> and he, I mean, he's a hunk of hunk of loving, right? I mean, and, and she looked at me and she said, hmm, she said, and you know I love you, right? I said, <laughs> yeah. She said, well, I'm sorry, but I'll probably run away with the guy. I mean, it's Hugh Jackman. <laughs> and, and I said, I thought about it for a moment, you know, wiped the tear out of my eye. And I said, um, you know, if he knocked at the front door and I asked it, answered, answered it, and it was Hugh Jackman, and he proposed to me, I'd probably run away with him as well. And I'm not even gay. <laughs> I mean, it's Hugh freaking Jackman, right? And, and the moral of that particular story is that we are not the commercial equivalent of Hugh Jackman. We can't just go up to people at business networking meetings and put our business card on their hand and hopefully they'll talk us about becoming a client. That's like proposing marriage on the first date. Yeah. When you're selling a service, the difference is that you're actually marketing a relationship, mm. not a thing, not a product. And unfortunately, we're not, as I said, the commercial equivalent of Hugh Jackman. So we need to give people a few dates yeah. before we propose that they talk to us about becoming a client. And that's the primary difference between marketing something that's physical versus a service or idea. You can put as many ads as you like on the radio or the billboards for people to call you about coaching services or, or whatever services, they won't call. Mm. But if you put golf clubs at half price on a billboard, yes, they'll call and they'll buy. That's the yeah. difference. Yeah. Oh, my darling, I am here to interrupt this interview just really, really quickly to inform you that I have something for you if you are new to business and you need a business plan. I have a breakthrough business plan just for you. All you need to do is go clickety-click all the way to learn.brandsashka.com and you will find it. Woohoo! And now let us get back to the interview. Au revoir! Dude, like we could speak forever. So I have two questions. So just to recap before I ask my two questions that I ask all my guests. So mm -hmm. practical implementation for the listeners today. One, working on that marketing message where it's not really just the features that we're working on and the pretty benefits or, you know, just the sales point, but make it clear that the result, that you introduce yourself with the result. And the second thing, <laughs> take into consideration that journey you know, whether you're doing a physical product, the marriage and the washing machine, just remember that when you're going, when someone asks you something, you're going, is this a marriage or a washing machine? <laughs> Which way am I going over here? Um, I would love for you to fill in the blanks of three of my core values and what they mean to you. Creativity for you is? Creativity to me is, well, in simple terms, it's a new idea that's useful. I like it's also a completely natural process for me, unfortunately. And I say unfortunately because I can go up to the mailbox and clear the mail and I come back, I've got 12 ideas that I want to implement. <laughs> Visionary, yes. Wisdom for you is? Observation. Oh, I like that. Wisdom for me is observation. It's observing reality and basing my behavior on what I've observed, not on what I was hoping to observe or experience, but what I actually observed. I love that. That's a new one. I like that. 
passion for you is? Overrated. <laughs> oh, God. It's, I mean, it might just be me, but honestly, when I go to someone's website and they go, I'm passionate about, I start yawning. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so overdone and overrated. I mean, energy. Wow, that's something I'm interested in. Mm. But passion's become almost a byword for, I want you to understand I'm enthusiastic. I mean, <laughs> if you're not enthusiastic about what you do, for God's sake, find something else to do. Or go on holiday for a month and freshen yourself up. <laughs> but passion is just, it's just part of the, the entry ticket, you know. It's, and for God's sakes, in my world at least, don't make a song and dance about it because you know, I'm interested in some results. Uh, it's nice you're passionate about that. It's nice you feel about that. But it's not really of any consequence to me, I'm sorry. Yeah. So. I love that. <laughs> that is so cool. How do you want to change or challenge the world doing what you do? I really want to, and I know this is going to sound a bit Machiavellian probably, but I want to call out the bullshit. Mm. I want people to experience value for the money they pay to marketers, to business coaches, I mean, to get a real return on investment, 50, 100, 500 fold. And in my quest to do that, I mean, I have, in my last book, Marketing the Invisible, another bestseller, I'm calling out the bullshit, baby. Mm. People are saying stuff that isn't true. Yeah. You know, we've got certain celebrity politicians around the world that are a beacon for lies. Mm. And in my space of marketing, I'm really disappointed and frustrated that there are so many bullshit artists the marketers that are trying hard and maybe not delivering as much as they were hoping for i can live with that but the ones that are out there just blatantly telling lies oh man you're in my targets baby. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you know that's something that gets me going in the morning that's that's part of my mission is to i'm not saying i've been mother Teresa my whole life but you know there are things that i've done that i'd you know probably be embarrassed to admit but uh, you get short of a buck, but it's not going to stop me from I'll, may, perhaps gently and politely pointing out bullshit when I see it. Yeah. I love that. Tom, thank you. We have come to the end of the interview, but for the listeners, listen to this very carefully. www five, the number, so you spelling it out, F I V E five hour challenge.com or leadgendemo.com or leadsology.guru and this will be in the show notes where you can find out more information from the Meister of Marketing the Invisible, Tom <laughs> Poland and you can find all his social media and where you can find him, where you can sign up and go through that gorgeous, gorgeous process to find out what to book a call with Tom. I mean, here we are. We're talking about, you know, lead generation and doing it honestly, doing it, you know, you don't have to trust him. You'll only start trusting him when you actually get into the whole process and check out his program. Thank you so much, Tom, for being here, taking the time all the way from Australia in the evening. You're welcome, mate. <laughs> You're welcome, mate. Thanks, Sasha. It's been really interesting and fun being here. Thanks for the invite. Thank you as well. And to the listeners, Remember, fast and furious and be the change that you want to see and be in the world. I shall see you again next week. Love you lots. Bye-bye. Dang, that was just super califragilisticexpialidocious. I enjoyed having you on board and please do me and you a favor. Head on over to iTunes, SoundCloud or Stitcher. Click subscribe and a super bonus. Leave your review and you stand a chance of being announced and advertised on the show. I'm always striving to ensure that your brand is uplifted and empowered. Remember, done is better than perfect. So be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and send in your feedback too. You're the absolute best. Keep rocking.